This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 501 uh, from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, good news, we just signed a lease. We'll be here another year. Yes! Congratulations! <laughs> yes! Uh, so that is official. Uh, uh, we will be here, I think, until so the begin- at least the beginning of September of 2021 in this uh, uh, studio. It was our first renewal, actually. We've been here for three years uh, as of September. So we should celebrate. I don't know. I would have thrown a party. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. You, you can add a party for episode 500. You can just, add a party. I, you know what? When, when, the... when we get all this clear, we're just going to do a giant makeup party for anything that's happened over the last however long until we're, we're through this mess, right? And uh, we'll just celebrate everything, invite everybody. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be... It'll be a coronavirus a coronavirus a, a vaccination party in the long run. <laughs> but anyways, whatever that is, um, uh, well, you heard the voices, of course, with us. Uh, he is the gadget guru of Big Bank International Esquire, John Chichilla. He's uh, hey. he was well tech oh. supporting here before the show. I, I turned things off. I turned it back on, and lo yes. and behold. And hello, it internet. Works. <laughs> hello, internet. Also with us is the Dutters. Hi, I'm still wearing Mandalorian stuff, even though it's not an official Chemo Tuesday anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there are no more Chemo Tuesdays. I know. I'm just going to keep wearing Mandalorian Boba Fett stuff now till the end of time on well, Tuesdays, just to remind me of my time. There you go. There chemo you go. Tuesday. It would be, chemo Tuesday. It's, it's just it's it's good awesome cast garb uh, in the long yeah. run. So. <laughs> so it's just awesome cast Tuesday, which is... It hasn't been just an awesome cast Tuesday in a while. That's so right. This is exciting. That's right. <laughs> uh, of course, this is the awesome cast. Please check out everything on awesomecast.com. Hey, I fix stuff. Because if anybody's going to tell me the stuff that I, uh, 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 the attention to the detail that I have missed on the website is when Rob De La Creta comes back on the show and he let me know about my broken links. So we fix those things. <laughs> and you can go over there, awesomecast.com, check out this and past episodes. And actually, we do have a special edition return of the awesome chat. We talked with uh, uh, Potion Low from uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon University and the, um, the Novid app. That you can get on your phone to help with contact tracing uh, through ultrasound, ultrasounds, or ultrasonic audio. It, it was 24 hours ago, and I already forget about it. Uh, uh, but you can refresh that. We got a nice half hour interview with him. Uh, you know, please download that Novid app. You can use it no matter what state you're in. It does not use the Google Apple stuff, and it was a really good conversation we had over there. Check out that. That's in your podcast feed. If you're checking out this episode, it dropped on Monday, so you may have missed it. If you usually check in on the on the on Wednesday after this drops. Um, um, and the videos over on our Facebook and our YouTube's as well. Some clips over on Instagram uh, too. Uh, but you can go check those out. You can drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. You can hit us up on awesomecast on the Twitter, on the Facebook page. We got a wonderful Facebook group. A lot of great discussion over stories that have been coming out over the past week uh, with our awesome chatters. And uh, of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday across social media for Awesome Cast. That's over on Facebook, where a lot of the a lot of the conversation and and people drop into the chat room, including eventually my mom probably tonight. Uh, also uh, on the Sorgatron Media. Twitch, uh, uh, Periscope, YouTube, um, all over the place. And of course, please surprise to the show um, on your favorite podcast uh, catcher. And wherever you're catching, if you're catching us live now, whatever that platform is, please give us a like, give us a share, get it out there, get people in here. If you're on the podcast, give it a share, give it a review. Uh, We do appreciate it in helping uh, the awesome cast crew grow. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast, our friends at the Coffee Club level, Bat Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the Fan of the Show level, uh, Michael Fedor, pthmuseums.org, and Dave Podner. 
Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. You guys can support the show too if you dig it over at patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week that we all just slipped in there. Let's think back. We were thinking back last week with our 10-year anniversary. And Katie, uh, uh, take a look back. Take you, you apparently are taking a look back to 1995. Yeah, CNET uh, is celebrating their 25 years of... Or so they're going back to 1995 and what the tech was in 95 and, you know, a much simpler time than mm-hmm. what we're dealing with right now. But uh, talking about the like Nokia 22110 with, you know, was like the first with Snake in 97. Yes. We had our pagers. Yeah. Who didn't play Snake on their phones? <laughs> that was the whole reason we had a phone besides using the phone part of it. And then your pagers, how important pagers were for everyone. Because you were really cool if you had a pager. The massive CRTs. Don't miss those. Mm-mm. We're moving those. Uh, VHS tape. Uh, oh, the desktop computers were still the Dells, the CRT monitors. The compact. Oh, here, Chilla. In 1995, the, um, a compact ProSignia desktop. Actually, this was in 1999. Started at twenty six ninety nine, two thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars, or about if, if it adjusts for inflation, four thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Wow! So your compact ProSignia desktop three thirty. Uh, it had CD and floppy disk. <laughs> We're still dealing with dial up internet modem. Brum brum. Fifty six K. In case you're keeping track. Uh, cordless landline and answering machines. And I, it's really funny looking back at shows from the late 90s, how important answering machines were to mm-hmm. coordinate your plans. Mm-hmm. Couldn't just tell your friends what were going on. You had to let, leave a message, let them know where you were at and what's going on. The boom box, which everybody loved, and the disc man. If you had a disc man in your giant pockets, which I feel like Sorg had those pants with the giant pockets that fit a disc man. Uh, did I? Yeah, I? yeah, no, yeah, I did. I de- I, well, maybe like not. the Jenkos or whatever they were. Yes. <laughs> maybe not in 1995, but I was very close to have. I might have been still in my grunge phase in 1995, so it was more <laughs> about flannels. Ooh, um, cameras with film, 35 millimeter film. Mm-hmm. Remember some of those? We had to take them to kiosks to be developed. <laughs> Camcorders which still had VHS tapes, but with our high eights, mini DV and VHS C's. So there you go. And most importantly, the Nintendo Game Boy. Yes. Yes. Was a big thing in 1995. The cornerstone when, of high technology. When was the Sega, what was their portable? The Game Gear. The Game Gear. When did that come out? Uh, relatively, because I think it for I think it first dropped in 90, is it 89 or 91? That the Game Boy dropped. Game, Game Boy dropped that 91. in 91. Oh, 91. It was 91. Yeah. And, and Game Gear, I think, relatively dropped the same year, if not shortly Game, after. Game Gear was 91 in the okay. U.S. Yeah. Or North America. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the expensive. That's that's the one. That's the one the the well well to do cousins had at Christmas. And <laughs> so, <laughs> and I had my Game Boy with my Super Mario Land, and they had Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> so um but uh you know I, I i love these i mean this was um i forget i don't think you i don't were you you weren't the one that shared the 9 11 uh technology look back i think it was somebody else yeah. amanda maybe uh mm-hmm. that, that did from bold pittsburgh uh by the way while i'm thinking of it bold uh bold pittsburgh new podcast is now up uh just posted over circuitronmedia.com in that feed and they're, they're renewing if you're on the old bold nights out uh, the show is back. Uh, please go check it out. Uh, first episode from Amanda just dropped, I believe, today. I, I just noticed it. So, but anyways, um, no, I love these. I, I I don't even think I was on the internet in 1995 yet. We definitely didn't have cable. Like like it was like 1996 was the year we figured out technology in my household, <laughs> for the most part. So uh, as far as I'm trying to, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think when we were we started on the internet. Um, is right when uh, probably when AIM was a thing. Because I remember, and like chat rooms were the cool thing in places. You know, you go into a chat room and nobody knows who I am. This so, fun. so this is a, a we were, this is going to be an offshoot discussion probably. But um, we did not do AOL. We it was all local providers for us. Like I don't think I think the issue was where we were at 
we could not get a local dial-in number for AOL or Com, uh, not Compact, uh, Com. Well, who am I thinking of? Com, Com, CompU. CompU. No, no CompuServe. 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 Prodigy. Any of those? I remember. I remember researching those because at this time, I'm pretty sure I was getting my my computer magazines at the time, uh, looking to build my next computer. We ended up buying it from Radio Shack. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so 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 I was aware of a lot of this, but no, yeah, where we're at, we couldn't connect to any of that kind of stuff. But like, we found one one provider that would work <laughs> called Nauticom, uh, Pathway or Nauticom. We we you know between those, and th- and that was it. That was it. So, what, but, what about Net Zero? Net Zero? Did we use Net Zero? I might have for a minute. We had Earthlink for a minute. Earthlink. Mm-hmm. Maybe they were a big one. That was like the first major provider that had a number for us, and we tried that for a bit. So it was a it was a hodgepodge. Um, uh, I I don't know if I've talked about the Katie. I don't know if I talked about this on the show before. Um, I had a fifty six k modem that actually would bring in two lines, so it was dual striping fifty six k lines. Whoa! And it was it would smart drop off. If we got a phone call on the main line, because we got we got the dedicated line for the internet, um, and uh, it would drop that off and just drop to the fifty six k. Oh we, wow! And it was, but then you had to find a provider that supported that. It was it was some it was high end high end at the time. <laughs> you were, you were rich. You were, you were rich. You had two modems, two <laughs> phone lines. You know, I, I saved. I, I was I was saving my pennies for that. I. <laughs> Um, and that was, I don't know, that was probably like 97, 98 or so, uh, by the time we got that. It was Diamond Multimedia that used to do the sound cards and the old 3DFX cards. Oh, man, now, now you're throwing me back. Katie, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? Jeez. <laughs> we have time traveled to the past. Oh, the 3DFX. I got I got the, the pure 3D that had the actual extra two, two, get, two megs of RAM. <laughs> A whole six megs. Oh, jeez. When you had to like, I had, go ahead. I, my my machine, I think we got it. It had four meg. I saved up, and I got four more, so I got it to eight. Mm-hmm. And then I remember wheeling and dealing as I do, and I ended up getting it where I got four four meg chips, and I swapped them. That and like a hundred bucks for for one sixteen meg mm-hmm. dim. Yeah, and it was it was like four hundred and fifty dollars for sixteen meg of RAM back then. Oh, eBay was great for me. I was just buying extra parts off of eBay like mad at the time. Uh, Chill. Just I just noticed. I don't think you're coming in off of the proper microphone. Um, oh no! So if you want to double check that setting real quick, because I'm like I'm realizing you're a little a little more roomy than usual. But uh, thanks, Katie. I'm going to be I, somewhere I have. I'm pretty sure I have a stack of technology magazines from like this era. <laughs> and yes. and I was already looking back at the CNET, <laughs> the CNET show. I, I, I know I've mentioned this on the show, the CNET show on Sci Fi Channel. That was like that opened me up to technology and Internet like completely. It was the greatest thing to see, like, you know, the, talking about modems and and the internet on television on like sunday afternoon <laughs> you know uh those kinds of things <laughs> but uh yeah yeah well we had a I, oh go ahead am i less roomy uh, yeah you are definitely less roomy so um yeah yeah but uh <laughs> yeah yeah my mom said and my mom's actually in there she was there uh <laughs> we had we had a we had a shared phone line uh we actually had a party line in the early 80s apparently where we were at so oh boy uh anyways uh chilla what's your awesome thing so my awesome thing of the week is a and i don't even remember who makes it now um it is the I don't know, R E I I E H nine plus. It's a mini, it's a mini keyboard track pad. What? That's, that's, and I have it right here for those of you who can see video. Okay. Um, so it, Carl was like, did you get like a sidekick? What's going on over there? (laughs) That's what it looks like. So it's, it's, it's like an old, it actually reminds me of like the original xbox controller yeah because it's kind of 
taller. Yeah. Um, with less of a curved so, edge. So, so but, for, to describe it for audio, it, it's got a keyboard that takes up most of the device. It does again looks kind of the size. Hold that up again uh, if you can, uh, so I can uh, can describe it for people. It, and it does have like four buttons, like a controller, but it's like home and volume on the upper right, kind of a trackpad in the top middle, and then like an OK menu D pad ish, little like a circle, but a D pad kind of thing. Uh, on the upper left that is crazy uh, yeah that, that is it the backlit version that i have i see tagged here it is the back that's the one i have um so, and on the inside is on if i turn it around and open it up yeah it's a it has a rechargeable battery it looks like a cell phone battery yeah and then it actually has a spot for the usb okay in it and the whole purpose of this device was for my raspberry pi oh it's one i'm only using one usb port and it gets me by enough to make sure it boots and i get into whatever i'm getting into and then i've been remoting into it instead at of some point instead of like dragging using a full-size yeah. keyboard and everything like that it's just a nice little handy thing to, to, to kind of deal with it yep and then even then like i can also so I loaded up Raspbian. I want to play around with Pi VPN to build a ho- like a home VPN server. Mm-hmm. But then I've also been messing around with Kodi and RetroPie, mm-hmm. and those will those will boot right in. Um, so like once I get like I usually only put like three or four keystrokes on here, and then I'm doing whatever I'm doing, either remotely or I'm gaming or or whatnot. So it's been it's been an amazing experience playing around with the raspberry pi and that device and then the other the other thing i'll give an honorable mention if you do use a raspberry pi um i highly recommend one of the ac adapters that have an inline power Mm. button so like my usb like the cable actually has a power button built into the cable um, so I've been, I've been tinkering a lot with that over the last two it, it, so If you get, if you get a package, like I, I get kind of the all in one packages where it's got the case and everything when I buy a raspberry Pi, and you'll get like basically what's a, a it's a power supply and it just comes into the USB. It, it's kind of like a built in what, what you would use for an old Android phone. Right. Um, mm-hmm. so I basically have to just unplug it. <laughs> Actually, even the one that's hooked up here that I hardly use anymore, uh, from that testing phase where we had some extra ones for the video feeds, um, it, it, it's hooked up to the power switch <laughs> in the box that turns off all the video stuff in in the studio space here. So that's how I managed it. So <laughs> I, I mean, that's the other thing. You, you you could also just have a a uh, power strip, right? Mm-hmm. So, but but no, it's nice to have the built-in thing when you don't you, when you can't do that. Well, I'm actually thinking about. Because I want to use it to VPN back into my house when I'm not home. Mm-hmm. My thought process is so I don't have to have the VPN server up and running, putting it on the default boot OS. And then, because I'm, I'm, I have like three OSs booting or three boot things in the menu, making that the default and then putting it on a remote power switch. Mm-hmm. And then I can go onto my phone and turn the power on for that device so it boots up if i ever need so to get back say, in. say hey g turn on my reboot my retro pie or something yeah okay and when i'm not in the house yeah and then i have remote access to my house wow that's 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 a lot <laughs> but i but i i don't know if i want to leave a vpn server running all the time either true true wow well, my awesome thing is a lot simpler than that, I believe. Well, well okay, okay. It's, it's, no, it isn't actually in the long run. So recently, didn't we over the last couple of weeks, somebody mentioned on the show about that Pokemon Go guy that had like like a grandpa that had like 11 phones or something on his bike in like like Japan? Like, I think we, t- we, we talked about it during some Pokemon update. I can't. Okay. I don't know if it was at launch, but yeah, well, I, know. I think yeah. it's because the the um the thing that the 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 dual thing that was like League of Legends was was announced last week. Is that what we were talking about? It's going to be on the phone. It's going to be on the Switch, uh, crossplay kind of situation. Well, as if the universe and specifically the Verge dot com um seem to know. I, I maybe Kim Lyons put in a word for us to check in on this. Uh, but how about we got an update 
the grandpa is still biking and Pokemoning with 64 phones attached to his bike. I don't know how he attempts to drive with this thing because it's at that point. But this is, yeah, 64 phones running Pokemon. Um, and uh, holy crap. How does he reach the top row? That was my question. I, maybe he's got like a stick, like, like a, a stick with a little, you know, smart thingy at the end, right? Uh, to touch okay. that. So, um, I, I, that's, so forget what Chilla was trying to set up with his voice activated remote situation. I think, uh, grandpa Pokemon has you built, has you beat there. I, I, I think he does too. Wow. I, I, I'm just envisioning like a yardstick that has like the capacitive touch yeah, nub. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, um, I mean, I, if, how was this guy doing during the, during lockdown? <laughs> um i i haven't well, really they, they, i wonder if he just mounted it to his wall because didn't they affect like didn't they up the spawn rates and a bunch of yeah, other things yeah or... I, I noticed that i'm surrounded by pokemon i i've only i probably only logged into pokemon like twice uh over the lockdown and just like wow there's a lot around me right now that's really interesting so it's uh it, it's it's interesting but uh, I, hey, if anything's going to survive, it's Pokemon. The only thing that's maybe taking down Pokemon Go a notch is the lockdown. Is you can't go anywhere. It was the thing that got us out of the house, and now we can't. <laughs> so thank- and you made friends battling the gyms. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we did. Yeah, because if you're like, hey, hey, friend, uh, 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 that happens to be here. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. It was great. I mean, it was the best time to be alive. <laughs> it was like the time where we could see each other and see strangers and we're all playing the same video game in open spaces like the Perry Monument that had like a hundred people hanging out at Presque Isle. I'd never seen a hundred people at the Perry Monument on Presque Isle. That's crazy. <laughs> and there they all were just wandering around. You would say, there's a Jigglypuff over here. And you'd see like 20 people just walking, moseying over this direction. <laughs> it was it was just wild. Like that, that were you were you in New York when something spawned in Central Park? No, I was not. I don't. Uh, okay. I don't believe I was. Um, but like the Perry Monument was the biggest one for me. Um, also, when we were at Myrtle Beach last, did I ever tell you about this? When we were at Myrtle Beach last year, went down with my mom uh, back in September, and we were walking around the uh, the the Broadway on the boardwalk on Broadway. Uh, you know, kind of shopping center, kind of boardwalky on a little man-made like shop, you know, deal. It, it really was. It's a lot like Disney Springs if you're familiar with that in Orlando. Um, it's uh, and, and we be walking, and I'm just like, what's this group doing over here? And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, it's a Pokemon party. They were getting all the spots, and and it was just like it was a group outing, and again, it was like like twenty or thirty people. Um, just gathering around and it was mostly dead because it was like the last weekend of the season like everything was on clearance and closing off for the season in like mid-September and I'm just, and we just like happened to cross in the wild we happened across a Pokemon <laughs> party uh, just just moving in a herd you know as you do oh I miss those days outside around people anyways speaking of uh reasons to get out of the house or you can just stay there and they'll bring it to you uh, i want to give a shout out to our good friends at slice on broadway right up the street here in beachview of course four great locations all across pittsburgh the riz sent me a message the other day the riz one of our co-hosts over on the wrestling mayhem show uh and also uh riz plays games he's contributed here before i believe uh a lot of times in our in our group submissions but um he uh, uh, uh he sent me a picture of uh, uh that he stopped by some slice and I asked if he was in my neighborhood, and I forgot there's four great locations all across Pittsburgh, like Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, if they ever play again. Uh, but we'll be honest, we don't know if they were really playing to begin with. Uh, but all those places, go check that out. Support our friends over there at Slice on Broadway, because in these troubled times, nothing heals like a little bit of pizza. Uh, so please go check them out. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, let's see what else is going on. I wanted to give... Oh, my mom has an awesome thing. And I was excited for this, so I'll share this and she's in the chat room. Um... My mom's awesome thing is a Logitech camera. I get a call last night from her and uh, asking about um, using the camera and everything because apparently last night was my, uh, I think it was my aunt's uh, uh, birthday and they were having everybody 
call in uh, to to wish her happy birthday as a surprise. So she was figuring out last minute Zoom and the camera, and uh, she so she shows me if this would be good for the for her laptop, and it's like a it's a it's a Logitech. Looks like it was a C three twenty, like a pretty standard one, right? And then she's like, "Well, this one be good." And do you remember the old ball cameras, webcams? Like, do they still make them like that? Because that that's probably like ten years old, right? Yeah, I'm guessing. But I think there's a couple like I I think there's a couple throwback like retro. They still make them, mm-hmm. but I I don't think it's like I think it's like a a callback. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so so throwback webcaminess. Does it yes. also do the three twenty by two forty and uh, uh, ten frames? You can get like a seven twenty or ten eighty p. Oh, one oh, high nowadays. end, high end. Gotcha, gotcha. High end. Says the guy that's coming at us in four K. Four K. You're yeah. you're not going to get it in four K, but you'll. You get know it. what? I think I'm finally convinced. I'm going to start recording this show in ten eighty. Finally, after all these <laughs> for fun, <laughs> for funsies. <laughs> You know, for funsies, I don't know who else is going to be able to see it uh, at, at this point, but uh, yeah, I might, I might do that. I might do that. Uh, I wonder if it's possible. I wonder what we could actually use to try to really push me in 4K, because the most I get out of Google Meets, yeah, I think that's is the, 720. yeah, that's the thing. I can't even get your video in more than 720 because of Google Meets. Um, so I, and I don't want to push it because then we could lose reliability. Right. So I, I, you know, I'm sure the internet's fine here, but I just don't want to overdo it, but I don't know. And then Katie's just coming from her phone. So, Oh, Oh, no, I'm laptop today. Oh, you're laptop today. Whoa. Does it look any different? (laughs) I I don't know. (laughs) So yeah, no, it's, it's probably, it's probably about, about even. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. It's all coming out of 720, so yeah. so who knows? Um, anyways, we did have uh, one submitted story from Dave Potter. This was a, this was a story. So this was mentioned at WBC when they were talking about watch updates, and this is another one that my mom's interested in. Um, Nine to Five Mac uh, had a story on here. Uh, Chill. I don't know if you got into this one about the Apple Watch hand washing de- detection. Um, and, and he had a comment like the background of the hand hand washing detection goes really deep with them. Um, so so I'm sad about this because, to my knowledge, this comes out in the next watch update, which isn't till fall. But and I also read, and I don't know if it was in that article, but I read somewhere where they've been working on this for like seven years or something. Wait, what? <laughs> like this isn't this isn't something. I don't think this is something that they just came up with because of covid um it, it's just like a nice time like maybe they weren't even going to tell us about it until the release except for covid is happening so they, they put it out in there to be timely yeah hmm. yeah i i saw somewhere i thought where and maybe i'm off mm-hmm. but i swear i saw something where this isn't like this is something they've been working on for a while. So, so the, and, and yeah, that's what he was talking about, about this going pretty deep. So, so how it's going to work is it's going to aim to automatically detect when you're washing your hands and to start a 20 second countdown timer with cute animation. I like it tells you cute animation. Uh, if it texts that you've stopped washing your hands before the time is up, it politely prompts you to keep going. So there you go. But what it should do uh, uh, you know, as opposed to having a sign that says "Sing Happy Birthday," sing sing uh, Judas from Fozzie. If you're at a wrestling party, um, it could actually play a song for me to sing along to. You just work that Apple Music into it, right? That'd be more effective. Maybe maybe embarrassing depending on your song of choice when you're at the bathroom at Sheets. But um, I mean, but I think it should do something to measure like. And maybe it does turn and motion. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see? So, so when we when we started on this fun COVID journey, um, <laughs> that's not the way you state it, but okay. <laughs> did you did you ever see like the person that took? It was like blue dye, or it was like paint mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with their with latex gloves, and mm-hmm. they showed like just washing your hands. And how like you just miss spots in between, like they, you if you when they did that they now like when I wash my hands, like I'm washing like up above the wrist, 
Because I want to make sure I get all the nooks and crannies. You want to make sure you wash your watch in the long run, right? Because it's going to be collecting. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I I started thinking about that. I'm like, how much is the collecting that I'm not getting that's under my wedding ring? And then how much is like in these crevices, like around my watch as I'm going, uh, you know, because I'll wash up to here, but not like around that, you know, just like we were about our phones and everything else that we touch. Um, uh, Katie, what do you what do you think about the hand washing uh, assistance here? Um, will, will it help you or are you already meticulous with this? I'm not. I, it, it's really funny and I shouldn't admit this anywhere publicly, but once we started talking about how important hand washing was, I was realizing how I wasn't doing a very good job wor- washing certain parts of parts of my hand. I almost said washing, uh, certain parts it's of okay, my hands. It's okay. We're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I was washing my hands. It's identifiable. And I, and it was funny, like, I was like, oh, wow, I wasn't doing a very good job, like, especially around my thumb. The, I'm right-handed. So, yes, my left hand, got, you know, it was just weird mm-hmm. to, to really think about things and slow down and go, oh, geez, you're not really doing a great job washing certain areas of your right hand because you're so dom- you know, dominantly right, right-handed. Mm-hmm. So, left hand was, not, was definitely slacking in this regard. But I love the idea of this, like, timing for you so <laughs> you don't have to. It's it's mm-hmm. it, it's that corrective behavior, right? Yeah. Like that, that's what that's what we need. It, 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 you need to create new habits, mm-hmm. whether it be around health ex- exercise. Like you know, I mean, that's it, been transformative for so many people to say, "Did I did I did I fill my rings today?" Right? Or mm-hmm. or I got my notification that uh, 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 Missy had had uh, be, made her goal for July or June. And I was like, oh, congratulations. And she's like, I don't know how I did it. I was like, well, maybe it was those two shoots where we walked around all day. I don't know. So, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, that, that kind of make, it kind of keeps it aware, right? And, and that's what hopefully this will do. Although I'm sure a lot of people will turn it off. I, w- I wonder if they can include it in like, in the that weekly summary mm-hmm. almost like screen time you see like what <laughs> websites you spent the most time Ooh, on or what yeah, apps many, like how many minutes did i spend washing my hands in the last what, what is your average hand washing time right mm-hmm. because that would do that that gives you a a nice curve that you can work with um that you know say hey you're you were you were better at meeting your hand washing goals this month you know so I don't know. That could be interesting. Uh, and I think people underestimate and overestimate time mm-hmm. unless you have that, you know, you pay attention. Like if you set a stopwatch for 20 seconds, it's so much longer than you realize. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I think it's it's a great like time training tool. Especially if you're like in a, in a busy bathroom where you're just like, I need to get out of here and out of people's way. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be that guy's like, why is why why is he why is he washing every crevice up to his elbows? <laughs> what? I, some of us have to catch a flight. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, my watch says I'm not done yet. Gotta go like, watch, I my, watch, my watch says I'm not. Hold on, hold on. I didn't. I gotta sing Happy Birthday. I gotta start over. Um, you know, how, however you manage that, apparently. So, oh, jeez. Um. Anyways, I, I, I feel like I missed. I know there was some other stuff that was in the chat room. Um. But uh, you know, looking back. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, uh one more story here before before I go go throw another shout out here. Uh Katie, uh as as we do, here's another animal. This, this combines your two kind of stories, animal crossing and nudity. Uh <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so I love this one that popped up that said, uh Animal your character in Animal Crossing New Horizons is a never nude. So apparently it was revealed. And, uh, through glitches before and, and somebody i don't know how they hacked into this but your character model actually has like coverage over the nipple area and the lower area so it just looks like you got a little like kind of bathing suit going on um weird dark flesh colored bathing suit going on i also <laughs> want to i also don't completely understand why this person is it, it, is this just what they like is everybody always wearing a hat in animal crossing is that why this guy's like bald on the top with like frumps of hair in it? No, no, because it's weird. Because it's you wear like if you take off all your clothes, you're in a white tank top and white. I don't want to say boxers, but like boxer-looking shorts. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 your default <laughs> as far as. So I, I, so this has been um, a part of this because there, there was there was something that there was some new feature that they rolled out. That's the reason that they were they were finding all of these. Um, 
secrets and everything. Like there's something about you were at the Dodo airport building. Apparently at one point you were, um, they were going to have you be able to go into it. They mm-hmm. abandoned that. And for some reason, if you were to break the code and go into that building, there is actually a desk there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else, just an untextured desk sitting in the middle of the room. Uh, you know, things like that. But I love that when you kind of hack codes and find like, hey, here's a whole level that was never finished in like Super well, Mario 64, right? It's really interesting because one of the things that they hacked into, this is a little while back, was you were able to go out into the water. Somehow they were able to get themselves out into the water. Mm-hmm. On tomorrow, starting July 1st, you will be able to actually go into the water on Animal Crossing. It's part of the one of the updates is you're going to be able to swim in the water. So so so, so it's like is, it was an unfinished thing that somebody accidentally stumbled on perhaps? That's what I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Be like little bits of those code are in there somehow it got activated with some way they did something weird. Um the thing so I saw that story and my response I wanted it to be was when are we allowed to get into the wrestling ring that you built? to actually do some more than just <laughs> lay and roll around like it's a bed. Like that's yeah, that's that what would be great. That's what we need cuz if if there's anything Animal Crossing uh professional wrestling and I see that your video was still uh, uh getting some comments this week. Somebody was asking how you got your wrestling ring uh uh entire wrestling arena <laughs> over there over on the YouTube. Well, what's funny is I this is, now we're into um the other show you're on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do. Um, my niece is, my niece got a new neighbor and he's wearing a luchador mask. His name is Stinky. He wears a luchador mask. He has a corner ring post in his house because they come, you know, when they, your neighbors move in, yeah. they just, they come with their pre-assigned stuff. Yeah. The wallpaper is my wrestling wallpaper and he's got the bell too. So this is Stinky's domain. <laughs> the Stinky's domain. <laughs> <laughs> so Stinky's a luchador wrestler. For, you know, for a moment when you started telling me this, even though I know we're talking about Animal Crossing, I'm thinking it's like the physical neighbor at home, his <laughs> name is a kid named Stinky that runs around in a luchador mask, which would have been my friend in high school or elementary school or maybe me. Uh, so, <laughs> but that's awesome. That's great. I, I love it. I it's um, I was sad to see there was a story this week that... Um, and 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 I don't know why this is a correlation, especially considering how wild things are. Because of Animal Crossing success, supposedly Nintendo is pulling back on mobile games. I don't. Why you were doing really good with mobile games? Animal Crossing is an unprecedented blockbuster because of circumstances. <laughs> Let's be yeah. honest about this. Like it was probably going to do pretty good, but. It, it, like like you had the world kind of in your favor at that point right yeah why wouldn't you even if you even if you just used mobile to get more people over to the switch or and even even how many people the downloads for animal cross i redownload animal crossing pocket camp just to feel kind of included uh mm-hmm. because it's impossible to get a nintendo switch and i have other concerns uh so uh you know it, it's it's it, it, it seems like an accessibility point, and and I, I don't know. It, it also, I don't know what else was announced. I think this this was the course of the experiment, maybe for them, and they're just like, eh, you know, they're being Nintendo about it. So, either way, we got Mario, we got Pokemon, which I know is not entirely a Nintendo product, uh, and we got uh, Mario Kart on my phone. I'm happy. I'm happy. It would be nice to have some well, Zelda, but we got you had Doctor. Yeah, wait, you had Doctor Mario. Mario yeah. You had you had Mario Run. You yeah. had Mario Kart. Yep. There's some. I other... was hoping for some. I was hoping for them to pull something sooner or later with Zelda in there. Zelda, and I thought there was something half announced. There was also a couple other uh, strange Japanese RPGs that came out. Fire Emblem, I think, has a game. Katie, you were going to say? Oh, it just I think with Nintendo and especially with Animal Crossing, there's there's a percentage of people who play a game like Animal Crossing or any video game that do everything involved with the game. And there's a bigger percentage of people who just play it when they can. Mm -hmm. And then like suddenly we've switched the percentages to people doing all the things in the game because they have time now to the people who are only doing a handful because they're still maybe working or, you know, doing things, (laughs) doing things in the world. So now they've like exhausted all these like things that were supposed to be exciting for a long period of time. 
Like we need something new all the time now with Animal Crossing as opposed mm-hmm. to like a slower rollout. I think they've had to add things a lot faster than they were anticipating. And maybe that's like to some of these glitches that we've seen, like the accidental mm-hmm. swimming and things like that, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's not just the thing you get on a card anymore. <laughs> um, it's, it was, you know, what was I saying before the show? I was, download- I was uh, installing some of the discs on my Xbox and realized that the update... Uh, of a 50 you know you, you install 50 gigs off of the disc but then there's another 32 gigs of an update coming at you and it's just like what are we doing here uh <laughs> you know <laughs> it just doesn't physical media doesn't make sense with these anymore uh so it's it's incredible it's incredible um well any any other uh animal crossing updates i guess the big update is is the biggest thing right yeah i'll have a big update for you next week <laughs> oh, fantastic. Looking forward to it. Well, guys, in the meantime, we've been trying to update a lot of people around here uh, through Sidekick Media Services housed right here in Sorgatron Media and will be for the next year, thanks to our new lease agreement. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm really excited about that. <laughs> It's it's a uh, listen. I'm looking for any positivity these days, <laughs> and the fact that I know I'm here for another year just helps so much right now. Um, but uh, no, we're doing a lot of stuff. We're helping a lot of people out. We're uh, working on some video content for social media uh, through uh, several clients, as well as uh, currently in the process of uh, retrofitting a church to be ready to go online with their services uh, in the coming month. Get them off of those dread, those dreaded Zoom calls for their services, um, and go live, live, live from that that big that big building. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on there. Check out what's going on over at Sidekick Media Services. Services uh, I need to drink more coffee. Sidekicksmediaservices.com. Uh, we could be the sidekick to your superhero project. And man, it was a big it was a big month in June. Getting back to things. Getting back to things locally since we can't go anywhere like we would usually be doing in June. Uh, but uh, looking forward to a lot of the projects that we have going on here uh, lately as well. Go check it out, sidekickmediaservices.com. Okay, Chilla, what is... From video games to spreadsheets, Chilla, what's the excitement on Google? Chilla? What, is that my article? Oh, is it not yours? Oh, well, it was me. Oh, it was you. I, I'm sorry. I misread the names. I'm sorry. Katie, tell us about the exciting world of spreadsheets. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Google Sheets. Google Sheets is awkward, but I still love it because it's part of Google Suites and anybody can use Google Sheets. <laughs> it sounds like some sort of weird story. But now, um, so one of the updates for Google Sheets is it's going to be able to recognize what you are you're doing and make suggestions. For example, if you're putting in they use the example of attendees office address in like the opening to the email. Uh, they'll realize what you are starting to type and make suggestions, kind of like how um, in our Gmail, mm-hmm. it would make suggestions for the next word uh, to help you complete sentences because uh, you usually say something a certain way, which is fun once you train it, I think. Um, but it's the same thing with Google Sheets. So you're going to be able to do that. And um, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that they're actually going to start making some updates to Sheets because it is kind of clunky. Mm-hmm. And um, they're also, uh, the second new feature that's kind of a big deal that's going to be coming up is a smart cleanup, which can help you clean up your data by finding duplicate row, row, rows and formatting issues, which is something they've been missing out on for quite a while, because it's nothing more annoying than trying to figure out, like, for example, I was just working on a project, and I had to alphabetize a whole list just to see duplicates, because there's no way to, like, find and delete or find and show you know, where you're, you're having multiples and some issues with your data. Mm-hmm. And I think the last big thing, oh, the other thing was the connected sheets. Sorry, I'm not used to having this on my laptop, so I look like I'm pointing at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> I would think I'm staring intently. Um, but connected sheets, which has the big query data warehouse within sheets, so you don't, it's, it's making it more accessible to people. So you're not having to be an expert in SQL or any programming language. So it's able to get that big data analytics to anybody in the company instead of just specific people or, you know, if you have a smaller company, you might not have access to something like that. So so you're, you're, you're dropping all that in, in SQL was just kind of like a giant spreadsheet kind of situation from what I remember, uh, that little bit of programming in, in, in college. But uh, so so that, that just centralizes it and, and kind of... So the Sheets was Sheets always good at databasing. Like, like as an accessible database platform. Previously, I think 
Is, is it... I think so. Okay. But it wasn't as good as Excel was. It mm-hmm. never was in Excel. And um, it just lacked a lot. And uh, there was nothing, for example, with, I believe it's numbers. Yeah, numbers. Yeah. On the Mac. It's so it, numbers is like it's Excel numbers and then sheets like, like, is like down here. Something like Excel, Excel, you could draw draw information out of a di- database um, in dynamic ways, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 it just sheets was never up to that. Like I remember using things like Microsoft Access to do things like that, like fifteen years ago, uh, for instance. So those were yeah. The I think on the on the on the database side, I think even Access still has. Excel beat in, in some, like the whole table relationship, you're really probably not going to mm-hmm. put that across we're multiple getting, tabs. We're getting some heady database nerdiness here. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was, I actually used sheets more than I ever would have thought I would. Um, based on when we got married, we used sheets because we could both edit the spreadsheet at the same time Mm -hmm. to do our mailing list. Mm -hmm. And it was odd because back then, and I just looked it up to see if there's a way to do it today. um, You couldn't mail merge to do like mailing labels. So I had to do everything in Google sheets and then bring it over to Excel Mm -hmm. To then print my mailing labels in Word, but now it looks like Avery, the major manufacturer of mailing labels, yeah. has a Sheets add-in that lets you do your mail merge to create a bunch of mailing labels. Nice. So even even Sheets has add-ons, which I thought like pl- almost like a plugin, which is pretty hey, cool. I, I can see this. I mean, Microsoft went to the cloud. I, I mean, I think that makes uh, uh, people look more at Sheets as being. I mean, Google is so persistent in so many platforms for companies right now. So, so it was a matter of time for someone. Like, you know, you're seeing your AV integration and anything like this. Podner is excited for these updates because uh, now this is exciting. Sheets uh, needs to get a little more supercharged, and um, it, it was all it was always you know like numbers. It was that thing. Hey, we provide a spreadsheet. If you need pretty basic spreadsheets, here they are. That's what I use when I uh, uh, have to kind of pull together an estimate on things. You know, I can put the put your items of of, of uh, a project in there. You know, links if it's equipment or anything like that, and then I can do. I mean, I'm doing simple. I'm doing simple. I just use it for simple math, basically. I like, I need a list of things that will add, <laughs> and then I'm putting to put this column and this column and add them up over here. That's all I need. Just that that's that's just just it and sheets is 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 it for me so all right enough for us <laughs> the real game um <laughs> chilla chilla apparently apple this this is a rumor so i want to state this so is this a, is a ru- but uh, i'm more more rumor. than the rumor i'm mm-hmm. interested in your opinions okay and and ron crazy kraus and i have had this discussion so there's a rumor that Apple is not going to include the power adapter, potentially the USB cable and headphones in the iPhone box. Mm -hmm. And my question is, should I care? Now here's my theory. So I can probably go around my house and dig up old boxes that still have the power brick and the cable in them. Right. For this reason. The power brick, I, I've moved almost all to wireless charging. So the power brick is pretty much, for the number of power bricks I have, is useless. And when I travel, I have like a power, a, a different branded power brick that has like four USB ports on it. So I, because in a hotel, there's yeah. only so many pl- available plugs unless you're going to start unplugging their lamps and stuff to actually plug stuff in. Yep. They hate like me. I bring a surge protector with me. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. So and sometimes you still got to unplug shit to get to it, to, to, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, come so, on. <laughs> so, okay. So the power brick to me, uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to use it anyway. I don't care. Mm-hmm. The headphones, I think I still have a bunch of them in the cases. If someone's upset, if we, if they, if they don't get headphones and they're with their next iPhone, if you're really that upset, let me or Kraus know. We think we have a couple extra in boxes. <laughs> and then the cord. 
Mm-hmm. So everywhere where I want to plug in, the wall plug is too far away from where I want the phone to be. So I have to go out and buy another cord anyway because I'm buying like 10-foot cords online. Chilla, 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 chilla. Okay. Yes, we get it. Any of us that have had iPhones probably have these cords. But what if you're a first-timer? What if you just opened up the uh, iPhone for the first time and it has none of these things in there? I remember, remember the $100 PlayStation Classic Mini? Mm-hmm. You know what it didn't include? A power brick. It literally included a USB cord that was supposed to power it, but nothing to plug that into. Where are you going to plug in your your game console in the TV? Are there spare USBs typically around the TV? Chilla, I don't mean you, because of course you probably have a million of them over by your TV because everything is Chilla mode. Uh, so it and, and built the spec and, and, and everything, right? Uh, not to mention Xboxes and Playstations that all have like stuff you can plug into. But, which also, the idea of plugging a Playstation into an Xbox just delights me right now um, <laughs> to power it. But, this was, and granted, I paid 25 bucks for the PlayStation Mini, but if I paid 100 bucks for a PlayStation Mini and it did not include the wall plug to power it, I got a problem, okay? <laughs> now you just spent, let's say, $600 on your first iPhone. You know, I think that's the lower end one, right? Maybe down to 400 And you got it home and you do not have anything that plugs into it. Because it's lightning. Are the new ones? The new ones aren't USB C yet, are they? No, they're, no, they're still, still lightning. lightning. There's lightning. You, even if you're like, I got new laptops and stuff, you, you, you still don't have the lightning cable. You still need to get that. And so, then you're dropping another 20 or $30 for that because it's Apple. So, what if they're doing this to save them from raising the price of the device by 50 bucks? But that, <laughs> well, it's another 50 bucks. You'll drop another 50 bucks on the things you need. I mean, and again, it is I guess, persistent. I mean, it is, yeah. you know, probably there's a survey and says, hey, everybody's, people are barely use this. People are like chilling and have, have their bricks, brick, bricks and blocks. Uh, uh, what I'm also blocks. wondering with the new, if you have a newer laptop or newer other devices that you're plugging it into, mm-hmm. now they have to pl- give you the USB cable with the USB A adapt- A with the C adapter. And that's what I've, that, oh, like, that's what I've noticed. On the C and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Well, and started. that's what I noticed when I opened up my the one Pixel three A. Like it was, I felt bad for Google. It was like, here's this cable, and here's the adapter if you need it to be USB C, mm-hmm. and here's the power. I'm like, I don't, I don't need all of this. But so I feel like they're also just people were just tossing it's, things. It's, in the bin. The other thing is, you're going to buy the iPhone anyways in the long run, so they can do whatever they want. Katie, what do you think? <laughs> I'm not that. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have much of an opinion on this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you be upset if you had no cores in your next iPhone upgrade? I don't know because one, the headphones they gave me last time apparently stink, so I don't care oh. about those anymore. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's put it this way. Let's put let's reframe this. Would you be upset if your parental unit mother father whatever Ooh. received an iphone and it's the both of you uh uh and and you know open it up it says how do i plug it in and charge it that's my <laughs> cons- that is that is your legitimate concern I that, think, that right? is a legitimate concern yes. that might not be ours but uh, <laughs> first time or maybe anything? so maybe i wouldn't i wouldn't care if they didn't get a pair of headphones mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah yeah, so mm. I mean, that that that's the issue, and and yeah. I'm sure it's good reason. Plus, you know, Apple's going to the to push that envelope of uh, profitability. So, holy crap, it's eight o'clock already. Well, anyways, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, real quick, what else do we got here? Let's see. We already talked about spreadsheets plenty. Um, wait, no, that 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 was ways will let you um display your moods in the app with a new update, but I, but it was unclear whether the moods will be seen by other people. I hope they will be personally. But the moods, the moods that they have, I, I've just updated the app on my phone. The moods they had were the same moods they had before where you could select where you were angry. Do you remember if you went down in, if you went down in your options, you could select moods before. No, I hadn't seen that. 
Yeah, so you could select moods before, but they're a little bit more animated than they were. I mean, like, they look a little bit different. They're not as plain as they used to be. Like, okay. Angry was just red. Um, but, oh, yeah, you can okay. see the moods. Like, I could go on the app Ooh. now and see how people are, you know. But the moods are kind of like character choices versus, like, how are you feeling today? <laughs> By the way, uh, on, on the note of Waze, uh, Waze um, apparently just found all the railroad crossings in Pittsburgh. <laughs> And is letting me know about them. I, the track is twenty feet that way <laughs> on the road, <laughs> guys. Everything, everything is a railroad crossing here. <laughs> Everywhere. That's just. That's the. I'm sorry. Sorry, I had to get that out. It's not even marked the whole way down. What? What are we doing? Okay. Anyways, it's users. <laughs> I get it. Um. Amazon will let you co-watch Prime videos with friends in the U.S. Uh, Riz let us know that this uh, uh, watching movies from Prime on Twitch was already a thing. So, watching videos. Apparently you can take So it. are you allowed, but are you... I, yeah, what if I'm I, watching someone's Twitch and I don't pay for Prime? I, I think it's just because it's a Prime thing. They'll let you do that via Twitch because it's going to have all the bells and whistles on top of it and people flashing money gifts when you subscribe <laughs> or something. And I mean, that's not the way I want to watch the Goldfinch, but okay. Uh, so, uh, by the way, shout out to um, some friends of the show. Uh, documentary popped up on there. Uh, go Big or Go Home. It's about female wrestlers training here in Pittsburgh uh, and it takes place uh, about the beginning of 2018 and several girls that we've had on the Wrestling Mayhem show uh, are a part of that so go check that out it's a cool like uh, just over an hour documentary um, kind of some fun stuff on some stuff that was going on over at McKeesport that isn't anymore but anyway somebody's got ways open out there maybe it's me yeah Actually, I just opened it because I want to see all the railroads I've had it on <laughs> Um. Oh, what else? Real quick, I wanted to touch on before we get out of here. Uh, Facebook's work on VR glasses. Of course, they are. We talked about never dudes. And uh, Google is adding virtual backgrounds to Meet for Education. I was so for education, not G Suite, right? Um, and uh, it, I, I thought that was kind of interesting, and it felt distracting. But it, it was a good point. Um, who was it? Was it one of these? Somebody was saying something about uh, if they were. Yeah, yeah. Rob was actually Rob. saying if you, uh, you know, imagine kids with less than ideal home situation that feel ashamed of their background. What's going on back there and, and want to kind of cover up. That makes a lot of sense. So it was just interesting. I, I thought it generally it seemed interesting that they were starting with education. But I guess they're probably just making a big play for education right now and have to start somewhere. Right. So what's interesting, most people that I know that that did some form of homeschool. I didn't hear anyone that wasn't using G Suite or like Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. So I totally, and as a parent, I totally get it because like I was walking around behind, even, even like interaction, like I don't want to be distracting to them, but I have to go through that room. I mean, could you get imagine, anywhere. could you imagine, yeah, stop running through in your underwear again. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing algebra. Or like I would see like parents, like some of them, some kids were at their kitchen table and like the just where they're where they're situated, it's like the parents in the back background washing dishes. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't hear them, but you can see them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's I think it's a I really like the comment about, you know people that feel bad about you know whatever in their home yeah. but also just just the distraction for for five and six year olds and seven year i mean the, the shiny squirrel completely can disrupt an entire classroom oh absolutely very quickly i mean you, you we've all been in bad zoom meetings right or even mm -hmm. this show and uh and been distracted by things let's be honest about this i mean somebody had to have a baby yoda in an ad ad every week on the show and and we all kept looking at that well, I turn off the ceiling fan behind me because I feel like that's super annoying. Oh yeah, if you see that in video, because I've seen people I, with things like fans and stuff hey, in the back room, and you can't just because there's something moving. Like, hey, WWE doesn't mind it in their performance center videos, right? 
<laughs> right above the entrance <laughs> is the one of the big ass, like literally the brand name is big ass fans um yeah so uh so there's that i um i am definitely concerned by when virtual backrooms come uh for my co-host on the wrestling mayhem show because i've been fighting sound boys for years on that show guys i <laughs> it's uh it, it, it could be interesting but uh i also somebody saw somebody try to use a virtual background on one of these shows in the last week and their computer was not up to snuff and it did not look good it was it was like a weird cutout around them. I'm like hey man i don't think so <laughs> we're, we're not doing that tonight so all right well hey what we are going to do is close this show because we have more podcasting to do tonight and uh and we've got your your fill of awesome for this week katie you have been updating people on your journey which uh which now is now is a different portion of your journey uh, yeah. uh where can people follow up on that uh if you follow you're on instagram kate marie pgh I'm also on Facebook a little bit more, but not too much. But yeah, usually. And then um, K Dutters on Twitter. I'm here and there. <laughs> I pop there up there every so often. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Yep. Hi, I'm a thing. Uh, and uh, of course, John Chilla, uh, Chilla on the Twitter. John Chilla on the Facebook. There you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us again. If you haven't checked it out uh, on this feed, if you're catching us on the podcast or on this video platform, if you're catching us, um, it should have debuted uh, on Monday. Our talk with uh, the founder of the Novid app for the COVID-19 tracker using Bluetooth and ultrasonics, different than the API that you heard about. about. We ask him about that. We ask him about implementation of the very promising app. Um, and uh, please go check that out and, and the incredible work they're doing over there uh, with that group. And, C- uh, with, and he's a math math professor out of CMU. Uh, so really good conversation we had with uh, Potion Low uh, over there. And uh, so thank you for that. And, uh, and, and please check out everything and uh and check out the new shows like i mentioned bold uh bold pittsburgh is back on the podcast side and also shouts to our friends comic book pit thrifty bardic mystery to- tours um all kinds of awesome geeky stuff over at sorgatronmedia.com for you guys to check out and you can subscribe to the sorgatron media master feed uh over on your uh I- ipody your ipod yes on your, your ipod 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 type podcast device whatever that may be uh thank you everybody you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com